Hi, this is Valerian Magatsu with part three of learning psychology or psychology learning. Okay, so there are innate behaviors. Innate behaviors are a behavior not learned. It's hardwired into your brain through evolutionary neural pathways, essentially. We got four criteria, the types of innate behaviors, which would be reflexes and fixed action patterns. Now we need to see the distinctions between the reflexes and the fixed action patterns. There are similarities and differences, which we'll quickly go over. Innate and learned behavior in balance. Okay, so innate behavior is defined such as innate behavior, a behavior that is not learned, cannot be modified. It's, it's cemented in your being, essentially. Um, it, innate behavior happens in animals and humans. There's four criteria to see what an innate behavior may come out as. We have unlearned, invariant, universal, and adaptive. Uh, these all help you kind of categorize that it's an innate behavior. It should be helpful for survival. It should happen in all species universally. It should not, there shouldn't be different variations of how you sneeze. I mean, all let's say all dogs probably sneeze pretty much the same. Um, and it should serve a purpose in survival to help a species adapt. How do we show that a behavior, behavior is unlearned? Okay, so we got two types of innate behaviors. As before, we have reflexes, which you have a stimulus that happens let's say uh, a doctor hits you on the knee your reflex will be for your for you to reflex basically for you to tighten up you know he hits you on the knee with a hammer you know that test um, all doctors basically perform that test to check your reflexes so basically you have an unconditioned stimulus and then you have an unconditioned response your unconditioned stimulus can be uh, an allergen like dust your unconditioned response will be for you to tighten up and to sneeze um, another test would be you have a steak a nice tasty steak in front of you it's nice and juicy and you go cut it and you go to go for a bite your your mouth will naturally salivate um, the same thing would go for temperature extremes and sweat or bright light and pupil constriction now, fixed action pattern is completely different. There is a specific sequence or pattern of behavior elicited. Now, this doesn't happen with humans. Uh, we, we don't have a fixed action pattern. We're able to, to react to stimulus in different ways. Um, animals that do have it um, will have to see a sign or a releaser. Uh, a stickleback fish, for example, if it sees a female fish, will do a zigzag pattern uh, to show the female fish that it's ready to mate, um, that it's you know that it that it wants to mate with the female fish. A stickleback fish will also uh, swim in a specific way if if it sees a fish with the red bottom, which would be the male fish that uh, that would be competing for a mate, and will actually. Um, will actually go into an attack mode um, and it, the characteristics will be you'll see multiple uh, different patterns that that um, basically advertise such FAPs are neither intentional nor purposeful uh, a spider uh, will will create a cocoon no matter if you take the it, even if there is no no web like let's say there's a mutation and the spider doesn't produce web it will still try to make the cocoon and will do the activity of of making the web even if you took the web away from the spider the spider will automatically have a fixed action pattern to generate the behavior pattern of making a web a goose also has the same um type of behavior or fap um he, if it loses its egg, it'll quickly go back and try to get the egg back into the nest. You could even, re I mean, scientists have even replaced the the egg with a fake egg. And the goose will naturally 
go back and put the egg back in the nest. Uh, there is motivational conditions such as weather, uh, temperature, hormones that will trigger a fixed action pattern for an animal. All right, so let's go over the similarities and differences between them. Okay, so they both have four criteria, which we talked about uh, earlier. All right, so we have unlearned, invariant, universal, and adaptive. And they both need a specific stimulus, whether it be for the uh, stickleback fish, like a fish with the red bottom, or for a reflex being, you know, the doctor hitting your leg with, uh, with this small hammer hitting your kneecap. Um, there's going to be a specific stimulus. The difference between a uh, reflex and fa fixed action pattern would be a reflex is one action. Uh, like twisting, the, hitting, you know, hitting the leg with a hammer will be, or an eye blink. Those are, those are, you know, one thing happening at a time. Well, a fixed action pattern is more than one action. It's a sequence of behaviors, whether it be the fish is zigzagging and then the female fish comes and then uh, the female fish follows him and he starts to to uh, show where to where the female is going to basically place its her eggs um, you know it's a complicated set uh, of actions um, so the reflex will be part of an organism organism so the sneeze is only one section uh, of your body it's just your chest or maybe just your nose that would be a reflex well, a fixed action pattern, it, it basically has a full, it, it takes over your whole body. It's, it's a full body, uh, your, the full body is involved with the animal. So this is why uh, animals do have a fixed action patterns and they also have reflexes. Although we haven't proved in science that we have any human fixed action patterns, but we definitely have reflexes. Uh, reflexes and FAPs. Um, yeah, there's, it's not clear yet if it's in humans. We haven't proven that. Um, balancing innate and learned behaviors in nature. Do all organisms need the ability to learn in order to survive? Well, depends on the species. Some species are more dynamic in environments, have more clear and useful fixed action patterns, but some animals are in static environments where they don't need dynamic, um, a, a dynamic range of of reflexes and fixed action patterns. The advantage of having um, a learning behavior would you'd be able to adapt. There's no need for uh, the next generation to have to make those distinctions because they already have the ability to learn. Um, so it's kind of it's innate. Um, the cost of learning for animals that are more intelligent and are able to make these distinctions will will have to sacrifice um energy for their brains uh usually species that are very adaptive have larger brains or um they don't rely on larger muscles so uh, there's always a cost physically in um in evolution for having a species that's intelligent uh thank you so much for watching and subscribe